Grading the big six from the Premier League weekend's action, we're going to start off with Liverpool against Crystal Palace. It was an exceptional comeback, and it felt for me like the first seismic shift in the Premier League title race. I know I've been saying it on this channel for a few weeks because I think Arsenal, Liverpool, and City are in a three horse Premier League title race. But to come back against Crystal Palace, to overcome adversity away from home, their away form hasn't been the best this season. So to see that kind of change as well is massive for Liverpool. And then you look at Man City's form against Aston Villa, and you feel that that early kickoff put so much pressure on City to get back in the game against Luton. So much pressure on Arsenal as well. So for me, it's a massive, massive performance. And we're seeing Mohamed Salah score his 200th goal for Liverpool. He is up there with Ian Rush, with Steven Gerrard, as one of the greats for the club. Uh, he's been an incredible advertisement for Premier League football, for Liverpool Football Club, and for Egyptian football. He's an absolute superstar in Africa. And to get to that kind of level where he's scoring that many goals from the biggest clubs in the world, uh, and, and doing it you know, again this weekend, um, over and over again, Mohamed Salah is in the right spot, the right position. And if you talk about Premier League title run-ins, uh, Mohamed Salah is, I think, the best player in the world on form uh, in, in terms of total player at the moment. I think Mohamed Salah could go into Man City, he'd have 10 more points. I think even Chelsea, he'd have, they'd have 10 more points. Man United, he's that good. Um, and I think Liverpool's one factor is if they can build a midfield, I still think we need to figure it out because I think Endo didn't quite work in there, Gravenberch didn't quite work. Uh, he works better for sure, uh, but I don't think it's... He's not being trusted 100% Ryan Gravenberch at the moment. Curtis Jones kicking about. Uh, so Bozzolai and McAllis is injured. They, they might need to go out and sign someone in January. That might be Calvin Phillips. Who knows? Um, but the situation at Liverpool is very strong at the moment. I have to give them a massive A. Let's talk about Arsenal. Now, Arsenal lost in literally the same result that Man City had against Aston Villa. 1-0 away from home. Did they not learn anything from Man City's troubles? Did they not learn anything about the likes of Leon Bailey cutting in, uh, about John McGinn's presence in midfield, his ability to pop up with a big goal? I actually don't think Arteta looked at that game. He, couldn't, he must have been watching EastEnders because he should have been watching the Man City game and doing maybe the opposite of what Pep tried to do in that game. At least approach the game with far more energy than I think Arsenal had. Um, the, the reason Man City lost to Aston Villa, a lack of control in midfield, I feel Arsenal had a lack of control as well. I know they're going to have a lot of possession. I got slagged off on this channel for sort of suggesting that Arsenal's midfield wasn't good enough against Aston Villa. But it's not just about hitting it side to side and having possession. Midfielders now have a duty to score 15, 20 goals in all competitions. I'm talking about the older guys of the world, De Bruyne's of the world. Cole Palmer's that kind of guy. He'll, he'll end up with a load of goals when, he, when he's in his prime. And Odegaard is in his prime. Odegaard had an unbelievable season last season. Absolutely exquisite footballer. And he misses two big sitters on his strong foot, 12 yards out. He should be scoring two against Aston Villa. And Arsenal would have won 2-1. We never know. The butterfly effect is real. But the point stands that Odegaard should be putting a goal past Aston Villa. At least one out of the two. The first chance was beautiful. It would have been one of the goals of the season in terms of Martinelli into Jesus into Odegaard. First time football. And the second one was even easier. Um, absolute unbelievable opportunity in the second half. So Odegaard misfiring, Arsenal misfiring. If it wasn't for Declan Rice, I think these guys would actually be a little bit off the Premier League title race. I think Declan Rice is a factor. He's fully fit. Um, you know, players can stay fully fit all season. That is a factor that you have to contend with. And he is looking very, very good. He's, he's guiding them through some great results when they haven't been at their best. But it didn't happen against Aston Villa. I have to give them. I have to give them a C. Aston Villa are absolutely superb side. I'll talk about them more on the channel. I've been slagged off from Villa fans for not doing it, but this is a big six, traditional big six, grading all of them. We'll give Arsenal a C. On to Man City. Didn't cover the game on this channel until now, so uh, let me know your thoughts if you're a Man City fan. And uh, The Luton game was hard. I feel Luton have done this against Arsenal, against Liverpool, put themselves up early, uh, or at least bat battled early and kept it tight early in the first half. But in the second half, their legs go a little bit. I don't think they got the quality in terms of keeping the ball and that end-to-end -end football where you, you're physical and you almost make every game an FA, to, FA Cup fixture almost. I think Rob Edwards has done a fantastic job of that and when they need to, they're actually really cute on the ball, very, very tidy on the ball. They're a good side on the ball. But in the second half, they fall away a little bit and City were able to ex exploit spaces. Grealish popped up, Bernardo Silva with a beautiful finish. 
Um, and Man City, that was, I thought I was season defining. I was tweeting it because I just think if you lose to Luton or draw to Luton, it's, it's one of the worst results that you can have, uh, obviously, in the league based on who they are. But I think it's more of a sign of, of battling because they don't have the best squad in the world, but they battle harder than any other side in the league, in my opinion. They battle, in, they, they definitely battle harder than maybe not Villa, but everyone else in that, maybe not Newcastle at home. But they, they work harder and battle harder than United, Chelsea, Arsenal, 100%. Um, and if you can't get past that work rate, you can also get past their quality if you're Bernardo Silva, then that is the sign that you're not potentially up for winning the Premier League title race and you're a little bit flat, which is understandable. But we weren't. We were absolutely exceptional in the second half and the movement from Grealish was, was superb. He had a great game. Uh, Phil Foden was electric as well. So we can grind through the Christmas period 100%. And I think getting back to clean sheets will be very, very important. The likes of Guardiola, Ake, Ruben Diaz, I still think needs a little bit of work. Carl Walker, I still think there needs to be a little bit more work in there. But um, it was a very, very good result. And uh, I think against Luton Town, you have to just get away from that ground with a win and just move on and hope you never have to go there again. Uh, with, with all due respect to Luton, I think you just don't want to have to go there again. Got to give them Man City a B. Man United, nil. Bournemouth 3. That is one of the worst results in the history of Manchester United. They've lost 7 to Liverpool. They've lost 6 to City in the past. Those are the kind of games where the world-class players can make the difference. Bournemouth, if you've got Dom Solanke scoring against you after 4 minutes, the whole club is rot rotten to the core. Um, and Ten Hag is in a really questionable position. Uh, I'd be very frustrated if I was a United fan. A lot of progress was made, <laughs> relatively speaking, because I'm seeing highlight reels from Amrabat, I'm seeing a lot of positivity for Garnacho in the last few weeks. I think there has been. I thought Amrabat was good against Chelsea. Playing in, in midfield, I thought he was a, a good base to build from. And it just all went sideways. Um, really, really poor for Manchester United. And they don't represent the club. I don't like Man United. I don't want them to do well. Of course not. But they are an institution. And sometimes when you see Man United or Chelsea players throwing their manager under the bus, you do sit there and think, is this a state of modern footballers? And if it wasn't for Guardiola being the genius that he is, or Liverpool having Jurgen Klopp, these kind of huge gravitas managers, would modern players just be ruining football clubs with their approach to the game, with their heads going down instantly? Um, the game needs the, the Guardiolas of the world. And Ten Hag doesn't have that pull, doesn't have that gravitas to, to make real change at Man United. Whether that's his fault or not, that's a debate for a different video, but um, those players threw him under the bus against... Bournemouth, uh, there's no way they should be losing against Bournemouth, even with 11 injuries to goalkeepers, a striker, they shouldn't be losing to Bournemouth at home. This is Manchester United, absolutely embarrassing, it's a U. Chelsea, very, very similar situation. How can the likes of Everton have a better midfield than Chelsea? Decore, outstanding. And you do feel that Chelsea have got no one to hang their hat on. I think if Chelsea had, you swap out maybe Jackson and Mudrick, which is 130, 140 million pound, and you bring in Victor Osman, for example, even if Enzo doesn't work, even if Caicedo is lackluster, Lavia barely plays because of injuries, Thiago Silva, Fofana, that mixture of players that can all come in, build around them, and you build around Victor Osman, for example. That, that's, that's just one example where a world-class player for this Chelsea side would take them up the table, even despite the fact of how bad they've been. But you look at Chelsea against Everton, no one of, no, no of world-class kind of nature to get them out of situations. Cole Palmer is a very, very talented young kid. That's about it. And, and you can't rely on Cole Palmer you know, being a maverick and doing that, you know, scoring that goal against Man United because the rest of the team failed. The keeper, absolutely shocking. Sanchez, it's crazy. It's crazy. I have to give Chelsea a U. And finally, Tottenham Hotspur. Um, 4 1 back to winning ways. I think they're definitely in with a shout for the fourth spot. That kind of top three debate that a lot of people had for Tottenham. It's not there, lads. Let's be completely real. They're not going to win the league. They look good. They look so good. It, even I got blindsided by the Spursiness of it. I actually thought they, had, they could have had a run, but they, they won't. Uh, but they got a lot of quality in that squad. Sun is one of that kind of those world class forwards that I think Chelsea could do with that kind of you can just give him the ball, something will happen. He's got a donkey around him and Richardson. Kulusevski, I think, gets away with it a little bit. I think because he, he works hard and he passes it off to Sun, I think he gets away with it. I don't think he's particularly good or world class. So I think Sun, if anything happens to Sun, I think Spurs really would be struggling to even make top six. 
but he'll stay fit. Madison comes back, Van der Ven as well, and they'll be a shoo-in for the top four, especially with Newcastle's away for him. Um, it'd be them and Villa, I think they'll be, I suppose they'll be relying on Villa's European away days to kind of tire them out and drop points in the in the Februarys and the Marches of the world. Unai Emery will definitely be trying to win that tournament and that will be the opportunity for Spurs to get into the top four, top five. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. Big weekends for Liverpool and Man City and slightly less so for Arsenal.